Hello and welcome to Battlefront Miniatures latest hobby tutorial, the Panzer 470, the Vomag version. I started out here with the vehicle primed black and then airbrushed with uh, dark yellow. Now I'm applying the first color of my soft edge camouflage, uh, chocolate brown. It's a great color, nice contrast. A great thing about an airbrush here is you can get a really convincing soft edge camouflage, which you're seeing here. The amount you put on completely up to you. I sort of eyeball it, uh, but you can use photographs for reference, other people's miniatures. Obviously we post a lot of great paint jobs on our website and uh, customers who pop by on our forums and show off what they're doing are always great places to get inspiration. Once you're happy with this, we move on to our second and final color which is reflective green. About the same amount. Uh, same area, if you will, as the brown that we just did. Try to get some of them sort of separate, and then like you just saw right there, uh, you know, some right alongside the brown looks convincing. Definitely make sure you get a little bit of both colors at least on the gun barrel as well. Looking for balance here, just trying to get roughly the same amount of color on each part of the track. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is paint the tracks German Gray. Now, there are a lot of ways to, uh, to do tracks. Uh, you'll read different ones in, the, uh, in our Art of War books. Uh, but for me personally, I think uh, German Gray is a pretty convincing base coat when you're kind of going for an overall uh, dusty or uh, you know, weathered finish. Uh, I weather all vehicles that I paint. I think it, it really looks great, and uh, you'll see later on down the line here when we get towards the end of this thing. That looks pretty convincing with this color. Uh, also, you want to paint uh, the road wheels. Um, I painted the jack on the back as well. Oh, you, I bet you did. See? Oh well. Yes, the underside's unpainted, but you know, it's a wargaming model, and you're not really meant to see that. So, <laughs> I'm not going to show you both sides of the uh, the track, all the painting I'm doing in the German gray, but you know, that's uh, you get the idea. All right, now uh, each of the sculpts you get in the box set is going to have different uh, stowage on there. This one has a kind of a bundle back there. I like a little bit of contrast, especially because it's so dull, you know, with all the colors kind of blending into each other. So I chose to use dark sand uh, for the bundle. Okay, once that's done, uh, crack out your beige brown and paint all of your uh, wooden tool handles. Got the shovel right here. Uh, tool there on the back. Um, I use it on the straps, the bundle, the tie-down straps as well. If you don't, if you're worried that it's going to look weird having the the leather straps on that and the wood on the tank um, matching, and of course, feel free to use some other you know, color but this works for me. And really the focus of these, uh, these tutorials is not so much to get a paint job that you're going to win awards with uh, in painting competitions, but rather to get a convincing, nice looking paint job without you know, putting out a superhuman amount of effort. Because really, uh, all of us want to get our miniatures painted and on the table as quickly as possible and play some games. And that's really what these are all about. I, uh, yep, finishing off this little axe handle here. Almost missed it before. Got that done. Okay, now we're going to, you see in a lot of, uh, you know, pictures and other people painting these that you see kind of rusted the exhaust back there. So we'll go ahead and, and play with that effect. It looks cool. Again, more contrast. Always looks nice. Uh, the base coat here, painted these cavalry brown.
Okay, while I let that dry, um, I'm going to go ahead and you'll see on the sculpts, it's really nice. It's actually it's got some very realistic damage done to the Zimrit um, anti-magnetic paste coating. Where you can see some of it's been chipped off from like small arms fire and impacts and things, revealing the metal underneath. And by painting a little bit of hull red in some of those, you're showing where the uh, paint job has been damaged all the way down to the base primer of, uh, of the tank. Okay, now that that's dry, what I've done here is I've done a 50-50 mix of cavalry brown and light brown, and I'm taking a dry brush and I'm sort of stippling it on there, which is kind of, you see I'm doing there like a, like a jabbing motion. It's just to get a, give it a little bit of, lighten it up a little bit, kind of a highlight, the brighter colored rust, and uh, to kind of give it a, a textury look to it. All right, now I've sprayed the entire thing with gloss varnish, and now I'm applying gloss varnish to the sites where I'm going to put the... Uh, uh, Vermock decals. The reason we have put gloss varnish on the entire thing is to help capillary action when we get on later to the uh, to the washes and inks, which you'll see. Okay, right here I'm positioning the decal, and I'm adding a little bit of water and a little bit of decal softener to uh, get the decal to sort of behave and go where I want it to go. Uh, putting decals over Zimmerit is one of the more challenging things because you've got texture under there, and that effect that they call silvering, which you kind of see the outline of the decal, that comes from space, dead space that's underneath the decal. So you really want to try to kind of get it in there as best you can. Once the decals are both applied, I place another coat of matte varnish on top once, they're, once it's, everything's dry to kind of seal it in. Okay, now I've got a kind of three to two to one mix of three parts water, two parts brown shade, and one part black shade. And I'm basically using that uh, to shade the Zimmerit. Now this is where the gloss varnish is really helping us because it's, the gloss varnish is forcing this wash to basically go down into the low areas. Uh, the, the, the actual detail, the crack detail of the Zimmerit and not stay so much on the upper surfaces because I really don't want to darken the paint job that I've already done. I'm happy with what it looks like. So that gloss varnish is really helping you in that. If you didn't do this gloss varnish and you left it as a matte varnish and went to this step, you would actually darken the paint job noticeably itself. Um, and for this particular effect, that's not really something you want to do. Make sure you get a good coat on there. Make sure you get some over the decals. You see here, I'm putting it over the tools. You notice how that, that ink is really going straight towards the cracks and not resting so much on the flat surfaces, which is exactly what I want. Next, we do a straight 50-50 mix of water to black shade. And we're going we're gonna to do what's called a pin wash, which is to sort of anywhere there's hatches and, and detail we want to sort of put in shadow, uh, that's what we use. Now you notice I put a little bit too much on that tool there while I dried my brush off on a paper towel and then used it to sort of draw it away. So I kind of sucked that out there. But you'll notice here that gloss varnish is causing this to basically shoot into the cracks. Um, flow really, really well. You can see here where how easy it is to just go around the edges there, see? And it's not, you know, it's not spreading out all over the place and making a mess. It's really sticking to those cracks and crevices, which is exactly what you want here. anywhere where there's just a little bit of detail and you want to highlight it and sort of bring it out. Um, you can put some in that grilling back there. That's, uh, yep, right around the shovel area. Um, that hatch right there is access to the engine, so you can see there how, how easily that is flowing into those recesses. Super fast, super quick. It works great. A little bit in the tops of the muffler, because that's you know, it's open space. Put on the new fenders there. Anywhere where you got a lot of detail, but the Zimmerit you've already done, so you probably want to avoid that. Otherwise, you'll end up maybe darkening it too much, getting a little bit too much contrast. Won't really look realistic. I actually forgot to paint the end of this uh, tool here, so real quick, I just uh, jumped in and painted German gray on that. All right, now you can see how it's all coming together. I've given the entire tank a uh, coat of matte varnish. Now I'm taking a ripped up piece of sponge from, a, uh, from the box set and I'm putting German Grey. And I'm just kind of dabbing it all around to simulate chips in the paint from normal wear and tear and damage. Um, focus a lot on the fenders, the Scherzen, uh, crew hatches, anywhere where you're going to get a lot of traffic. Try and get those decals hit at least once or twice uh, so it shows that it's sort of scratched underneath. 
um, and helps kind of link the decal in with the paint job of the rest of the tank. All right, now we're going to fool around a little bit with some pigments. Uh, the first one I cracked here, a Vallejo's fairly new range. Um, we've got natural iron oxide that I'm going to use to darken up the tops of the exhaust back there and give it the impression of soot, you know, of buildup from the fumes, which you'll see, you know, look at you just any car you know, in the street, look at the exhaust, and you can see that. So um, you definitely want to do this after you've done the matte varnish because if it's a gloss varnish there, you're going to have a really, really hard time getting that pigment to really adhere too well to the surface. I put enough on there to where, you know, whatever your personal preference is, I wanted to darken it up a bit, uh, get it a little bit there, you know, from the engine there, that access panel. Also, uh, it's a great idea to put some on the end of your gun barrel, the muzzle there, because after several shots, you know, it's going to start building up there looks very realistic. Okay, now we're going to get some dust in the equation here. I've got natural sienna and I'm trying to stick to the lower 50% of the Scherzen, uh, the side skirts there and definitely the road wheels and just give it that impression that the uh, that the tank's been you know, traveling along and picking up dust and things like that. Weathering your vehicles is I guess I can't really say a necessary step, but it really gives that extra touch of realism that you'll see a lot of people don't do that. And I, I personally am a huge, huge advocate of the paint chips and the battle damage. And as long as you don't go, don't go too crazy with it, uh, but it really, really kind of it gets that realism. It just really sets it apart uh, and get, makes it that much more believable. Definitely get a lot in there in the tracks, uh, front glacis there, you know, road wheels side skirts. Now we're actually, what you see here is it's when we do a, another matte varnish here in a moment and seal all this in, some of it is going to scatter a little bit away and it's going to be left with a much more a subtle effect. So if you want, don't be afraid to put a lot on there I guess is the, <laughs> the moral of the story here. Also, definitely uh, consider using, I've only used one color here for the dirt, but you can use a lighter color, maybe even a darker color. Uh, Vallejo has an excellent range that you can use. This is just what I happen to choose for this one. Also, a few put random areas on the hull, and try to get a little bit on the decals, once again, to help link the decal in with the paint job so it doesn't seem like a, like a separate component. Okay, I've, I've given it a matte varnish one more time, a uh, spray varnish to seal in the pigments. You can see that it's a much more subtle effect now, which is nice. Now I'm going to my final step, which is a regular old number two pencil. And uh, it's a great way to show metallic wear along the edges of hatches and things, where all the places where you hit uh, with your German gray and the sponge, where the paint's chipped, try to get a lot of those, get a little bit of that pencil in there. Uh, so you can kind of show where it's gone down to the bare metal. Also, that's how I do my tracks. After I, you know, do my German gray and then the pigments, just use your pencil. You don't even need to use metallic paints. It's dead easy. There's a lot of texture there, so it picks it up really, really well. And the effect is very convincing. You can see here, spots here, spots there, anywhere where you're going to get a lot of wear and tear. Uh, definitely make sure you hit the edges uh, a little bit, a little bit uh, off camera here, but you can see here where I've got the pencil edging right along the exhaust there on the extra track link here and definitely you want to get some on the end of your the muzzle your main gun also you can see here I'm drawing in the the shovel and the axe instead of painting a metallic I'm actually drawing on them with the pencil and it looks very very convincing as warm metal and that's it that's the last step here it is full 360 you're all done do a platoon like that, you'll be happy. Thanks for joining us. Here's the full list. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to write this down. Really appreciate you checking in with us. And definitely continue to return to flameswar.com. We'll be posting more hobby videos for all the tanks you want to learn how to paint.